Today's video is brought to you by Squarespace. I was nerding out as usual about the new iPhone 16 lineup and I found quite a number of things which weren't mentioned at length or at all in the keynote. The iPhones won't be shipping until the 20th, but in the meantime, here's five things you probably missed on the new iPhone 16s, starting with a major overhaul to quick take videos. When you hold your shutter button down to quickly record a video while staying in photo mode, that's a quick take video. Up to the 15 Pro Max, this always came at the expense of quality because the resolution was limited to 1920 by 1440 at 30 frames per second and in SDR only. Across the entire iPhone 16 lineup, quick take videos are now 4K 60p and in Dolby Vision HDR. For myself, this would be a huge turning point to use quick take videos a lot more often because previously it was simply too big of a difference in quality when compared to dedicated video mode. It would appear now that that gap has been closed by quite a bit, though I am still curious to see if there is a significant difference in quality between quick take and full video mode. Something to test out once the iPhones ship. The most significant hardware addition to the entire iPhone 16 lineup is going to be that camera control. Apparently it's just called camera control, not button, even though it at least in parts can function as a button. But anyway, if you're looking for a case for that new iPhone, we're seeing some different approaches to accommodate camera control. Some case makers have a straight up cutout for the camera control, which depending on the thickness of the case could potentially make the camera control feel quite recessed to operate. Quite similar to how you had to kind of dig into a case to switch the mute toggle on the previous iPhones. Apple's original cases though, will have a sapphire crystal on the surface of it, which I quote is, coupled to a conductive layer to communicate finger movements to the camera control. So keep that in mind when shopping for a case, it could have quite an effect on your experience with camera control. But camera control will launch the camera app for you with a full press. Interestingly, I have mapped the action button on my 15 Pro Max to launch the camera app. So for anyone else who's been used to that, the camera control will be freeing up the action button for something else. In the keynote, it was also mentioned that the camera control button, camera control only, no button, can also be used to activate visual intelligence, which is essentially using AI to look up stuff with the camera. I was a bit confused at first because I thought pressing camera control launches the camera app. It would appear for now that a short press launches the camera app and to launch visual intelligence, you have to press and hold. That being said, Visual intelligence doesn't seem that it will be available at launch because Craig did mention that it's coming later this year. Our sponsor Squarespace, however, does have an AI powered feature that's already available now called Squarespace Blueprints. It's an incredibly powerful guided design tool to help you come up with a catchy website design using the help of AI. Unlike choosing from a template, this gives you a completely personalized design from color schemes to fonts and even lets you tailor the tone of the copywriting that's generated. Your website is automatically optimized for every device. It's also got powerful SEO tools built in to help your site show up more often to more people and in exactly the way you want. Of course, you may want to further customize your site down the line, and with Squarespace's next-gen website editor called Fluid Engine, you can intuitively customize every little design detail with drag-and-drop technology for both desktop and mobile. With your Squarespace website, you can sell anything from products to content to time. Payments are flexible and seamless for your customers, letting you accept credit cards, PayPal, and Apple Pay, or even offer the option to pay later with Afterpay and Clearpay in eligible countries. Head on over to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash zycheng to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. It was mentioned that the entire lineup will have improvements in terms of battery life. The product page claims some minor improvements for the iPhone 16 and 16 Plus, but when you look at the Pro models, we're seeing up to a four hour gain in video playback time going from the 15 Pro Max to the 16 Pro Max. The physical battery capacity for the new iPhones aren't officially disclosed, so it's curious how much of this improvement stems from having physically bigger batteries or the A18 processors just being that much more efficient. 
also exclusively on the iPhone 16 lineup, wireless charging via MagSafe now supports significantly faster speeds. The previous limit was 15 watts over MagSafe, but now the 16s can charge up to 25 watts when the MagSafe puck is running off a 30 watt or stronger power break. Practically, this means the charging time you get while using MagSafe is roughly as fast as using USB-C charging. So a very welcome quality of life upgrade for anyone welcoming an iPhone 16 soon. Finally, this concerns the new generation of photographic styles, which will be available across all iPhone 16 models. This time, it's going to be significantly more sophisticated than just a tone plus a warmth slider. It does appear that you can apply selective adjustments to affect only particular colors. Will this be the rise of iPhone look recipes? Guess we'll have to wait and see. But what really caught my eye was this line here that says the photographic styles can be reversed or reapplied in post. This changes things up quite a lot because photographic styles were previously all baked in. If you shot with a style, there's no undoing it or choosing a different style after the fact. Not only does the new generation of styles give you the peace of mind to rectify in case you didn't like a style you already shot with, but it also greatly expands the post-production capabilities on iPhone. Something worth diving into once we get some hands on. Hopefully, I'll be having one in hand next time I make a video about the new iPhones, but until then, I'll be seeing you around.